Cyclo maintaining strength near Sri Lanka. A tropical cyclone continues to draw nearer to the uh, island of Sri Lanka and the southern coast of India. A tropical storm here with at least 60 mile per hour winds and a little bit stronger than what it was yesterday. 8.7 north, 84.3 degrees east is the current position as of 9.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Here it is right now, uh, 95 km per hour sustained winds, a pressure of 994 millibars, still moving due west at 6 miles per hour or 10 km per hour there. Uh, a tropical storm by the Saffir Simpson scale at least, um, although none of the official agencies, the IMD or the JTWC have uh, gone along with it yet. Here it is right now with its uh, 60 mile per hour winds and whilst the wind field's not displayed it's a fairly broad one um, and you can see just how close it's getting to some of these coastlines now. Currently it is 298 kilometers from Batikaloa, 329 from Trincomalee, 473 from Jaffna, 601 from Puducherry and 649 from Chennai. Uh, I expect that we'll be seeing warnings along those coastlines right now with tropical storm force winds expected to impact the northern and eastern parts of Sri Lanka and then eventually on towards the Indian coast in the next 24 hours and beyond. We'll take a look at the models in a moment but that's where we're standing right now. Let's take a look first at the primary hazards and that's really for flash flooding. It will get a bit strong winds but it's mainly the rainfall that will be the biggest hazard from this storm particularly considering the geography of the area and the storm's extensive cloud tops right now. Heavy rainfall may occur over a very large area of southern India and Sri Lanka with high rain rates leading to flash flooding in susceptible areas. General flooding threats will continue as this storm and its influence will was push through southern India through the weekend. This is what we're expecting then in the next few days and you can see that wind field firstly increases and then starts to shut down later on on Thursday and Friday and then as it moves in making landfall somewhere near Chennai will probably only be a tropical depression by then or should it should make limp across the coastline and eventually dissipate somewhere inland over central southern India there. There's a tropical cyclone formation alert out from the JTWC on your left hand side but our estimates already have it at 60 miles per hour which is getting towards the high end of tropical storm status. IMD suggesting winds of 55 to 65 kilometers per hour, ASCAT a little bit more than that as well and the AMSU satellite estimates are hovering around 55 to 60 miles per hour so this system looks like it's much stronger than what the agencies are currently saying. This is the expected track from uh, some of the models here or a model ensemble uh, suggesting that it will miss Sri Lanka eventually uh, but it will have to turn north fairly soon to do so and eventually make landfall quite close to Chennai although you can see with the spread of the model there if we were to draw a cone around that there's still quite a lot of wriggle room. And you can see how broad it is on this GFS model run there. All of that green area was tropical storm force winds and as it moves inland uh, the whole region around there uh, could still get tropical storm force winds extending out maybe 300 kilometers in either direction, maybe more. You can see there it does get a little bit stronger in the next 12 to 24 hours. That's probably when we'll see a peak, maybe 65, maybe 70 miles per hour. And then it will start to weaken quite rapidly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, maybe dry air, maybe it's wind shear. Uh, of course at this time of year uh, systems don't tend to last very long anyway. You can see there it loses energy quite a lot as it pushes inland and a lot of the rainfall does remain offshore which is good news but we could still be looking at quite a lot inland as well up to and possibly above 100 millimeters and we'll get a proper look at the rainfall in just a short second as we watch this run again uh, showing a mock-up really of what a radar return might look like as that storm moves inland a very broad eye feature if it does indeed form an eye in the end um, and perhaps another disturbance following behind it later on in that model run 
Here's the precipitation expectations and those pink areas remain quite far offshore which is good news but we're still getting yellows and oranges so that could be over 100 millimeters of rain possibly pushing 150 maybe 200 millimeters in isolated spots as the storm ventures inland there. Particularly south of the forecast track we'll probably get more of the rainfall and you can see now we're marking some of these totals nearly 8 inches there that's 200 millimeters one or two spots there getting to 6 inches that's 150 millimeters but north of the cyclone doesn't look like there's going to be a huge amount maybe maximums of three inches which is less than 100 millimeters the northern tip of Sri Lanka should crack 100 but further south not as much sea surface temperatures unfortunately displayed in Fahrenheit we usually use Celsius but uh, the temperatures around the storm right now around 26 degrees Celsius which is just enough needed for a tropical cyclone and it'll rise a little bit as it gets closer to the coast of India getting up to around 27 but nothing really very high uh, temperatures especially along the coast of India and western the further west these storms go start to simmer off a little bit and those temperatures decrease uh, but certainly where the storm is right now it's got a chance at least of maintaining and here is the latest satellite imagery and this does reveal perhaps that wind shear is a factor particularly on the east sorry the eastern side of the storm as you can see on this imagery uh, in return it's blowing up some really enormous cloud tops near the center of the storm getting well into the minus 90s on that white color there uh, the dark yellows from the yellow colors there that's minus 80s into the white there minus 90 and this is a loop once it gets running from uh, the Indian satellite uh, INSAT and you can see the development of this storm in the last few hours so certainly wind shear on the eastern side and possibly a pocket of dry air which will be interfering with the storm as it continues along and that might push a lot of that rainfall further towards the west as well that may go a little bit further than the model's expectations so certainly keep watch on that and we'll have more updates uh, throughout this storm's track next up with our tropical weather bulletin early tomorrow morning.